it was the spring summer 2020 shows i think yeah over the last couple of weeks over the last week or so in paris everybody's out doing their best bit you know getting st stunt uh, stunning in front of camera wearing all their best garbs and all that malarkey chin stroking you know bizu bizu kiss kiss and virgil debuted obviously his spring summer collection show too and in that he revealed yet another nike collaboration right it seems like um nike have decided to kind of place all their bets on the va train they basically think like you know the way he works and the output that he's um, you know able to churn out is probably perfect for what nike want to do i think if there's one thing that we realize over nike about the last few years is that they're definitely more of a maximalist brand right they want the most possible shoes out there at the most possible time right they want as many shoes as possible to be out there in the market they don't care about you know flooding the market oversaturating it as many shoes as they can get out there the better there's no you know there's probably too many um rabid sneakers out there willing to pay above and beyond or go above and beyond to get those shoes so they know that there's you know the demand is super high um so if they are able to get the right shoe out at the right price range with the right amount of kind of marketing and hype behind it it's going to be a hit it's going to be a hit and and of course which better way to kind of solidify a hit than getting Virgil Abloh to do another Nike collaboration and this time it's on the Nike Air Force One silhouette um, it looks like he's doing an entire collection of Nike Air Force Ones it doesn't not really sure what the idea behind it is if it's going to be some sort of anniversary tie-in I'm not really sure but it definitely did pick up some hype or some attention over the interwebs the other day and I think when I initially saw them on the runway I wasn't that really sold on them, especially just sort of all over print you've got here. And I'm sure um, Nike are going to try and convince us that they use the same fabric that they use on the Louis Vuitton bags on these shoes, which I'm going to say with some sort of level of um, certainty that it's definitely going to be a lie. They're definitely going to use a version of the leather they use on the bags, but it's not going to be the same one. I just can't see it happening unless the shoes are going to retail for like a thousand pounds or something, which I don't see happening either. But regardless, um, I wasn't really fond of the shoes when I saw them on a the runway, but then now in terms of product shots um, on their own, they do look really, really good. Of course, they kind of harken back to the good old days of um, Dapper Dan, right? And now who's kind of got his own little attitude that he had does with gucci and this kind of early 2000s era in hip-hop where people were sort of like cutting bits of fabric bits of kind of gucci and louis vuitton fabric from bags or trousers or whatever vintage item they could get and then kind of slowly but surely in my case when i did it when i was in school um or when i used to buy them maybe sometimes from meteor sports is that they'd either be stitched on or super glued on but usually it's the same sort of kind of idea i think wiley was famous for wearing a few of those sort of pairs and you know especially on an all-white sneaker with like that sort of um kind of um gucci or leather or louis vuitton print pasted over the swoosh it just looked impeccable sometimes you get it on the front of the sort of toe box area but usually those two areas are the ones so that's great to see with this sort of mid colorway here that i've got at the moment on the screen it does kind of remind me a little bit of what um Comme de Ganso did with their air force one with this sort of like extra sort of material um hanging off loose i'm not sure if that's because it's a sample or whatnot then you got the double tongue which again is maybe a little bit similar to what um sakai have done with their nike so maybe this is partly a tie-in model i'm not too sure if this is going to be a unique thing but then if you look closely it does look like they've purposely kind of make them look like they're two shoes mashed into one you've got the kind of the you got a sock bit here of a mid kind of stuck into a air force one low so i'm not too sure if this is something that they've kind of cut up themselves in the studio and then made and then kind of put in there like as a styling thing you know obviously because he's got ib kamara working with him now at louis vuitton so maybe this is something that they've kind of done as a styling sort of nod i'm not really too sure on that one but the mids look really 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 good that's definitely something that we, i can say with some level of certainty there's i think supposedly 21 different colorways due to come out again if you listen to the recent um what interview was it before i think it might be an interview that he posted virgil on his kind of instagram um talking about the thing was kind of like a, a, a uh, an audible version of show notes which is pretty decent i think he spoke to one of the guys who designed some of the artwork on the invitations or something i'm not too sure um but regardless i think he mentioned that interview that how he doesn't have any issue with putting out more models he thinks the whole idea behind the premise is that you know um 
he kind of likes the idea that like you have these classic silhouettes in loads of different colorways and that can kind of inform how you decide to wear certain bits of clothing and it's basically the same adage that what gucci Mane followed right i remember it was a long time when people used to complain about gucci Mane putting out too many mixtapes and um and whatnot and I remember him saying something like, no, um, I don't cater to people that who think like that. I'm catering to my fans. And I know my fans always want to hear from me. So I'm going to put out as much material as possible for my fans. And if, any, if people think it's too much, they don't listen to it. But I know my fans will love it. And I think that's what he kind of does as well, Virgil, with these Nike collaborations. He knows there is a segment of the population out there that want to have every single one. Because I'm sure there's definitely going to be some sneakerheads who will kind of make it their mission to own every single pair in the collection or as many as they can. The same they did with the 10s and the Dunks and whatnot. So why not cater to them? And if you happen to, you know, get some stragglers along along the way, some general public normie kind of people, then that's a benefit. But um, yeah, 21 different colorways, um, kind of, you know, classic Air Force One sort of mock-ups to um, color blocking bits and bobs here and there. Um, it looks like the entire uppers are definitely going to be inspired by that Louis Vuitton fabric. If not, they're going to, again, try and convince us that these levers have been somehow plucked from the bags that they use. I'm not really a fan of the air air here on the back of the Air Force on sorry, the midsole, but, you know, it is what it is. That's sort of like his um, Virgil's trademark. I did see on one of the mids that they had on the instep, they had the sort of like off-white Beaverton stamp thing. So I'm not too sure if officially on the books it's going to read Nike Louis Vuitton Off-White because that looks like one of his kind of signatures, right? That kind of stamp there. I'm not too sure, but we'll continue. Again, you've got a uh, white and yellow colorway here. You've got purple or lilac and white colorway there too. You've got a sort of Celtic-y kind of colorway. You've got this colorway here that looks specific, kind of oddly enough, creepily similar to a Marvel Bapeser that came out ages ago i think it might be uh wolverine or something like that it was kind of similar to that sort of colorway let me see if i can actually get it up here um was it bape uh marvel shoes or oh, it's not hulk but it's definitely that colorway let me see shoes or oh, the whole colorway is really nice isn't it? i think it was a wolverine i'm not too sure which colorway it is but that looks similar to that one Okay, there it is. I've got it here. So that one does look fairly similar to, um, which one is it? It's that one, right? Isn't it? Yeah, X-Men. So it's the Marvel and X-Men one. So that colorway does look eerily similar to this. Let me see if I can get up on the screen for you. Bear with me. Okay, we've got it back up there on the screen. So it does look so oh, that's the wrong one. It does look similar to this. There it is, that one there. See that? And that is on the Cyclops. That Cyclops one does look very similar to um what Virgil did at Louis Vuitton with this sort of colorway. Right? There's some sort of similarity there between the two, I would imagine. But yeah, um pretty decent colorways all, all in. I think that might be the last ten, so I want to see a couple of more. Which one they've got here? got another one too that looks eerily like um is it a jp version that's got that toe forgot it went maybe it's a code or jp it's neville's one that's got like a silver toe with like a blocked with like a more darker sort of colorways that goes towards the back of the mad god i forgot which one it is but regardless anyway it does look fairly similar and you've got this called classic code code jp sort of colorway as well with the all white upper and the kind of solid black sole that you saw a bit used with the uh matthew williams um air force one that he did as well but is that leaks air force one the, the, the highs they did a few couple of years ago i think it might have been and of course you've got this nice little silver swoosh day coming through so um again no dates out um yet so far we don't really know all this text here from high beast says bloody blah 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 is there a date we don't really have a date so far to know when these shoes are going to come out but you know one thing we're going to know for certain we're all going to get l's we're going to catch hella l's out here so that's definitely something to keep in mind i'm interested to see how they roll them out which stores get them what's the sort of materials and release info going to be attached to them it feels like there's a lot of shoes coming out with virtual back-to-back -back. so i wonder what they're going to do with the scheduling are they gonna they're gonna they have to drop these um 50 dunks right that he's doing and then what how soon after are these going to come out right it's a lot of shoes isn't it? that's why sometimes i think it makes me chuckle when you hear people from nike talk about sustainability and environment all that sort of stuff right they are churning out so much trash 
Right, so much kind of um, not trash, so much clothes, so many items, so many things out there have been pushed out back to back to back. And again, that's not considering all the other stuff that they have that we don't know about. Um, and talk about something that we don't know about. Commend um, Virgil too. Very, very commendable that he was somehow able to keep all this under wraps. That's something that you can definitely say. It was definitely something that was kind of um weird considering how things leak so quickly especially with the chinese factories and whatnot it feels like um those rep factories always get some exclusive sneak peeks into models that we don't even know about before they've even been announced so for him to do this entire project and we have absolutely no idea it's coming is definitely commendable um definitely goes to show that he definitely has some good friends up there at nike they were able to kind of keep their mouth stream or maybe they were kind of worried about the backlash maybe that's why yeah maybe we have to kind of look at it differently maybe these leaks aren't exactly leaks in the conventional sense they're more so the brands themselves deciding what they want people to know and they purposely put stuff out for you know to kind of gauge the public sentiment similar to what the government here in the uk are doing with covid where they kind of decide you know which way the wind blows based on how people react to some things that they kind of conveniently leak out there maybe that's part of it but i know when i initially saw the pictures on the runway i wasn't a fan of the shoes and then as soon as i saw virgil post these on his instagram account from the top down they just looked great straight away you know what i mean and it does go to show how important it is like how much photography plays into sometimes sneakers especially how you connect with certain shoes i don't know what it is about them but it's definitely something you know the contrast with the carpet with these kind of severely flared tailored pants the laces all loosened up and that definitely adds to the overall um appeal of a shoe it definitely helps it to kind of elevate in this whole different way i don't know what exactly but definitely does um do it for me in that sense so that was definitely something and then i think when he when he then wore the tailored suit thing that definitely again added to the overall appeal and kind of made people think you know what this shoe is definitely the one and you know as we know with most hype shoes whatever shoes being worn by the model or being worn by the brand owner that's kind of collaborating with the shoe for mostly like day on a daily basis is definitely the one that's going to sell out so for sure if you're looking to get a pair um that kind of classic jacket sort of that kind of classic yeah louis vuitton bag color with the sort of uh the dark kind of colorways and the light colorways on the on the shoe is definitely going to be the one that ends up selling out the first so definitely kind of keep your eyes peeled out for them when they end up dropping but again great job from virgil he's shown and proving that he might be the number one collaborator out there at nike in terms of putting things together that people just consistently want you know sakai do a good job of doing that as well but on the scale that virgil's doing it and at the you know the frequency he's doing at the moment and the kind of quantity it seems as if everything he puts out people seem to kind of have a weird reaction to it there's another yeah this is a really or a strong reaction to it either way which definitely goes to show um it's definitely an inkling of what great design is isn't it right having either a really strong positive or negative feeling against anything is definitely a marker of your you doing something right i think when you do something and it's a kind of milk toast response is when definitely you should be worried and look at this this all white colorway is just lush in it again i'm not too sure if the leather is going to be exactly the same as the bags but the leather does look good that's one thing you could definitely say um without any sort of um indignation that leather does look good and he says here and his caption for the record in my mind therefore um reality in my mind therefore reality these are our objects with a capital a just as much as they are simply shoes once i find the right plinth in the right institution the idea is complete the quality of the materials and the methodology to make these is apparent from the casual iphone pick it would be it would take me a netflix series to properly break down the whole logic and process but i'm beyond honored to bring my architecture a division at nike focused on bringing inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world and my louis vuitton team focused desirability through the world's best craftsmanship artistic integrity and storytelling and of course siri play, play dear summer when i said that i meant this so yeah he's definitely going for blood this feels like he definitely want to remind you guys that that first nike 10 collaboration wasn't a fluke i can do it again and again and again regardless of what silhouette or kind of uh, shape or shoe you give me maybe there is something to be said for people thinking you know what maybe he's kind of um playing it safe and just going for the kind of killer models that people that he knows people are going to generally like i would argue against it but some people would say that he maybe needs to take it to the next level and maybe design 
design his own model with the help of Nike that may go to show if he's definitely got the juice or not. That definitely kind of is something that probably separates what Virgil's doing with Nike than what you, Kanye did when he's at his time there. Of course, he tests himself a bit more by making completely new silhouettes. But in terms of just delivering on the canvases they have available, Virgil might be one of the top out there. So congrats to him on that shoe. When it drops, it drops. Again, most people are going to get L's anyway, so there's no point even worrying about it too tough. <laughs> but it is what it is. We move.